Good afternoon, everyone, and happy Monday. I am Stephanie Stombach, Child Nutrition Consultant with the Maine Department of Education, and welcome to this webinar on Farm to School updates. There are lots of exciting things happening with Farm to School in our state that we wanted to highlight today. Just to make everyone aware, during today's webinar, all attendees have been placed on mute. And this webinar is also being recorded so you can view it at a later time. Now let's get started. Let's begin by reviewing what exactly farm to school is for those who may be less familiar with the term and why it is important. Farm to school consists of efforts that bring locally or regionally produced food into schools, such as sourcing local foods for school meal programs, which many of you on this webinar are involved with, providing hands-on learning activities, such as school gardening, farm visits, and culinary classes, or it may also consist of integrating food-related education into the classroom. With Maine being home to more than 8,000 farmers in 585 schools, there's much opportunity for schools to source local products in their school meal programs. Now, what types of products are we talking about? When we talk about incorporating local foods onto the plate, or in this case, tray, we are looking at all food groups. So this not only includes fruits and vegetables, but it includes grains, meat, meat alternates, and milk. In Maine, we're fortunate enough to be able to source local products for the entire tray. Of course, looking at food cost and student preferences are also parts of the equation. So why farm to school? Why is there so much excitement and momentum surrounding it? Well, it really is a win-win-win for all stakeholders involved, including kids, our students, farmers, and our communities. For kids, it provides access to nutritious, high-quality local food so they are ready to learn and grow. It also connects them to where their food comes from so they have a better appreciation for it. For farmers, it can serve as a significant financial opportunity by opening doors to an institutional market. And schools can serve as a significant market to farmers and growers in our state. For communities, it provides opportunities to build family and community engagement and also strengthens the local economy. So as you can see, farm to school really is a benefit for all involved. Now that I have provided an overview of Farm to School and why there is so much energy surrounding it, let's move on to our first update. Some of you may be familiar with the Local Produce Fund. This fund was established within the Department of Education and accepts both private and public sources. This year, we received a private donation. It works so that schools are reimbursed a dollar for every $3 spent on local produce. And to keep in mind, this is only produce and does not include other local products such as dairy or meat. This is a common misconception with um, this funding source. So it applies to only fruits and vegetables that are minimally processed. Each district can receive up to $1,000 in reimbursement from the local produce fund each school year. So we can spread the money out evenly across all schools. And many schools do take advantage of it. There is still money left in the fund for those who would like to get reimbursed. Speaking of reimbursement, you're probably wondering how this works. So in order to receive reimbursement, a local produce claim form must be submitted along with receipts to Nancy Kittredge in our office. 
A copy of the claim form can be found on our Local Foods to Local Schools webpage, and a link to that can be found on our homepage of the Child Nutrition website. And all claims are processed on the same time frame as the monthly claim for reimbursement that you do on a monthly basis. So now that we have discussed the local produce fund, let's talk about how it relates to recent farm to school legislation. So there are many bills related to child nutrition that have been introduced by the legislature this year. An LD 554, which we're gonna talk about, specifically relates to farm to school. The bill is titled, An Act to Encourage the Purchase of Local Produce for Public Schools, and it aims to have two purposes. First being it would provide ongoing funds for the local produce fund. In the past, the fund did not have permanent money and was dependent on donations like we received this school year. And in some past years, there was no funding available at all. So this bill is important as it would ensure that we have significant funds to help financially support schools in their efforts to source local produce. Second, it would provide ongoing funds for a position housed at DOE to administer the local produce fund, as well as other farm to school initiatives and activities. And there has never been a designated farm to school position at the state level. So this is really exciting and we're really interested to track um, this bill and see how, how everything works out. If you're interested in tracking this bill and other bills, you can go to the website listed on your screen, which is legislature.maine.gov. Another exciting update that is happening as we speak is the Harvest of the Month program. Some of you may have seen information on this program in the media recently. Harvest of the Month is a nationwide marketing campaign promoting the use of seasonally available local products in schools, and it's a new program to Maine. It's a collaboration between the Maine Department of Education and the Maine Farm to School Network. And I'll talk about our other partners later in this webinar. Maine's pilot program will begin in April and we are piloting for the months of April through June. The first month happens to be dairy month. And we will have resources available for, um, for that. We have had an overwhelmingly high response to this program. A total of 115 schools have signed up to date and counting as word gets out um, about the program. So by signing up for the program, schools pledge to do the following. You must serve the featured product at least twice per month in either the breakfast or lunch program display promotional harvest of the month materials provided by the DOE. And the picture that you see on this slide is artwork from a main artist that we are working with to create the materials. And we're also working with a graphic designer to pull everything together. So we'll be um, creating posters, um, fact sheets, which include some recipes on the featured product, and also stickers um, for schools that would like to um, do taste tests um, and provide stickers to the students. Tracking local purchases is also part of the pledge. And we're looking at ways to streamline this and make it easy for schools to track. And we will also be hiring an evaluator to collect this data and help um, help measure um, the local purchasing. And lastly, schools that sign up will take part in pre and post evaluations so we can measure the success of the program because it is so new and we're looking at this year as a, a learning year. And so the evaluator will be 
involved in this part of the program as well. Here's a calendar of the local products that will be highlighted each month. There are many stakeholders involved in creating the calendar, including farmers, to make sure the products are available on the particular months they will be featured. I'll give you just a moment to browse through the list. For more information on Harvest of the Month, you can contact Jen So, who is managing this program in our office. I have included her contact information here, and it is also posted on our website where the other staff contacts are listed. As mentioned earlier, this is a new program for Maine, and a lot of time and energy has been put into making it happen. So we are excited to kick off this program in the spring and to also have so much interest in the program already. Next, I am going to provide an update on our annual Farm to School cook-off. This is our fourth year of holding this event. And it was also um, came about as a result of um, some legislation. For those who are not familiar with it, it is a voluntary cooking competition among students and school nutrition staff using local ingredients, including one challenge ingredient per meal. Teams are tasked to prepare a breakfast and a lunch meal with not only these ingredients, but it also must meet USDA meal pattern requirements. This year, our challenge ingredients are apples for breakfast and dried black beans for lunch. And we will be soaking the beans ahead of time for the teams as we know that this process happens overnight and won't um, happen within the allotted time given. But both of these ingredients are being donated by Maine Farms including Ricker Hill Orchards in Turner, who will be providing the apples, and Fairwinds Farm in Bodenham, which will be providing the dried beans. So we're really excited to be able to highlight um, those farms. And in the pictures on this slide, you will see that each team receives farm to school cook-off gear, such as a, colored, um, a different colored chef coat and skull, hat, skull cap for each team. And these are provided by the Maine Department of Education with funds we received specifically for the cook-off as a result of the um, legislation. And the photo on the left is a student from Skowhegan Area Middle School. And the photo on the right is a team from Cherryfield Elementary School. And both of these teams participated last school year. So it's a really fun event. Um, we try to capture um, some nice pictures of the team and of the food that um, is prepared. And um, overall, it's a, it's a really good experience for the teams that are involved. So just a little more information on the cook-off. So this year, we have 10 teams participating, which is the most uh, we have ever had. We almost doubled um, the amount of teams from last school year. And as I mentioned earlier, a team consists of one school nutrition staff and one student. And because we were able to add a few more teams this year, um, we added a third regional cook-off. So, um, we have three regional cook-offs scheduled for March, um, and they will be held at the locations um, listed on the slide here. And teams are paired with a location that is most convenient to their school to reduce travel as much as possible. So we try to pair the, the teams with um, a location that um, they're most um, closest to. And each team receives um, cook-off guidelines, including um, a list of equipment that's available at their specific location, as um, all of the competitions are held at um, 
typically different um, tech centers, culinary arts um, programs. So there is, um, you know, equipment differences among those. And each team must sign an agreement form to participate in the cook-off. And lastly, the recipes used in all of the regional cook-offs are compiled into a cookbook. And this will be made available to all districts this coming fall. If you would like to access past cookbooks, you can access them electronically on our website provided on the screen. The last update for today's webinar is on farm to summer. For those who operate summer food service programs, Farm to Summer is a natural extension of Farm to School when school is out. So why Farm to Summer? It increases meal quality and appeal of summer meals. And you can also take advantage of the peak growing season, which can be more cost effective and access to those um, products that are not available um, while school is in session. And we discussed the Harvest of the, of the Month program earlier, um, and we are looking to pilot the program in the summer months for those schools that sponsor summer meal sites. Summer sponsors are always looking for ways to increase participation and bring students to meal sites. So this is a way to market and entice students to participate in summer meals. This program will be voluntary and schools that would like to continue it, continue piloting this program into the summer months are welcome to. And we do have some um, summer sponsor trainings coming up in the next few months. Lastly, I wanted to end this webinar with our partner organizations as they play an important role in the farm to school work in our state. Um, and are involved in um, many of the updates that we talked about today. And please note this is not an exhaustive list of our partners, but many of them are captured here um, that we wanted to highlight. And farm to school work in Maine would not be possible without them. So very important to the, to the work um, we do in the state. So this concludes our webinar on farm to school updates. If you have any questions, you can email me um, at stephanie.stombach at maine.gov or my direct line, which is 624-6732. And a certificate of attendance will be emailed to you if you registered and attended the webinar. And for more webinars and trainings, um, that we've done in the past, you can visit our webpage listed above. Um, as I mentioned earlier, all of our webinars are recorded and then um, we post those on our website. Um, so you're able to um, to view it at a at a later time. So thank you all for attending and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. <laughs>